Today, I will be explaining Backrooms level 1.3. Now, this is the highest rated level on the Wikidot in recent history, and it has a whopping 66 upvotes. It's kind of crazy, actually, and I think it definitely holds up to that. In fact, it's so good that it doesn't even need an introduction from me. I will let it speak for itself. Let's get into it, shall we? Backrooms level 1.3 has a class 0 difficulty, and it used to be a safe haven for weary travelers in the backrooms. Now, key words being used to be. At its foundation, the level was completely and totally secure and devoid of entities, or pretty much any other dangers at all. This backrooms level has a unique ability that has never been seen inside of the lore before this point. It can heal anybody who gets sent inside of it, by complete and utter healing. I will get into the actual details later, I just wanted to tell you what it did first. Level 1.3 takes the appearance of a blinding, pristine, white level, with hallways and rooms and corridors sprinkled inside. The level size is roughly one square mile, so it's very small compared to other levels, and the entire place, from the floor to the ceiling, is covered in an unknown, smooth, cool material that has a soft, plush feeling. The surfaces here are incapable of getting dirty or having any liquid on them, which means it's constantly very clean because it's always sanitizing itself. If the tiles find themselves damaged or broken somehow here, they can also regenerate themselves over a course of a few days. The main area of this level is one single hallway that has a bunch of smaller halls and rooms that branch off of it. Each of these paths leads to about 16 large rooms that each contain important supplies that you could find pretty useful. Things such as medical instruments, like medicine and gauze, and all sorts of liquids as well. There are other places staggered in between the supply rooms that have been nicknamed Detox Zones. So this level is very popular among the sick and among the injured inside of the back rooms, as going to those detox zones I just talked about will rapidly fix and heal pretty much whatever is wrong with you. The rooms can heal anything from broken bones, to poisonous liquids, to grievous wounds, to fevers, and anything you can think of. It seems to be able to do this just by you being inside of the room. That's all it takes, it's you being in there will start to heal you. There also seems to be a small four-person medical staff that lives inside of this level to administer help when it's needed. Making the journey to a detox zone in level 1.3 can be even better than simply just getting your broken bones fixed or your organs fixed or whatever. In fact, oftentimes wanderers that leave this level report having a higher immune system and better overall health just by visiting the level, like just by walking inside of its constraints, you leave feeling better and being healthier. It seems to make you physically stronger. Obviously, a location like this is very, very sought out by wanderers in the back rooms. In fact, it's kind of like a mythical type of thing that gets whispered amongst people. Tales of a place that can fix anything that's wrong with you. A level full of rejuvenation and healing power. It's almost like the fountain of youth. And because of this, the level's entrance is protected by Meg. That way, no unwanted people can find their way inside of here, and no entities can walk in by accident, because that would kind of throw off the whole vibe. Now, I mentioned earlier in this video that there is a staff of about four individuals who help the healing process go along, and these people live in a colony called The Ward. Now, Meg created The Ward as a makeshift hospital here on level 1.3 with the goal of helping the seriously ill or seriously injured wanderers. These professionals help keep that wanderer alive until the detox zone can heal them. As the level does not like instantaneously heal you, it actually has a process that takes a bit. There's actually a decently understood timeline to figure out how fast the detox zones work, and I'm gonna hop into that right now. When a sick person or an injured person is put in a detox room, most poisons and pathogens will be fixed in mere minutes. That's all it'll take. Examples of poisons and pathogens you might find in the back rooms are liquid pain and the hydrolytis plague. Things like exposure to mold and other objects like that that might make you sick can be healed here too. These sorts of things will be fixed 
rapidly. However, things like terminal illnesses could take several days or weeks to purify your body. So you'll have to stay in that detox zone for the full amount of time to get the effects. Things like broken bones or other cuts will also be quickly healed as well. And after a few minutes, you should be able to walk out and be fine. But in a weird way, this fast healing can also be a bad thing. You see, if you have a broken bone and you go into a detox zone and you let it heal you, the bone could heal crooked and wrong because it's not set properly. And that's why it's really important to seek out the help of one of those medical professionals that lives here because they will, you know, set the bone properly and then put you in a detox zone so it can heal you because you want to heal correctly. Obviously, you don't want to heal all crooked and mangled. Now, while being healed inside this level, you will not go through it without pain. You're going to feel something. The process often involves sharp stings and burning and pulsing pains from the location of the impurity, but these feelings will only last as long as the healing takes. And I imagine it sort of feels like how Wolverine felt when he got all the metal put on his bones. An underappreciated part of this level is its own natural ability to sanitize itself because anything that's spilt or dropped on its floor, it'll literally just absorb it and re-sanitize its own self, making it a completely spotless place where no infections can spread. Now you might think that that's it, an expanse of tiled white hallways and rooms with weird healing properties. It's a nice story, and theoretically, it sounds too good to be true, doesn't it? Something rather disturbing has happened recently to this level that was a safe haven for so long. Several anomalies have been logged, and the appearance of something called the Decay has been noted in the confines of level 1.3. The Decay itself is some sort of anomalous black rot that slowly takes over various levels at seemingly random times. We can't predict when it happens, and we don't know when it's going to, it just does. The Decay itself has not gotten into the detox zones, but some of the hallways and medical supply rooms are experiencing being overrun by the Decay. And this Decay has also made strange effects happen to the level's properties, where you won't really heal all that well anymore. And because of this, the level is now off limits and cannot be visited. When the Decay began to spread and seep into this level, the weird effects that I'm about to talk about came to be. I'm going to go into these anomalies of some people that were recorded coming here and their autopsies and stuff. Fair warning, it's really disgusting and there's mentions of harm and blood and that kind of stuff. So go forward at your own risk. The first case of a wanderer coming here after the rot and the decay came is a bizarre autopsy of a man named Mr. Stevens. And Mr. Stevens had no other allergies in his life, but he's seemingly unalived from anaphylactic shock. His skin had rashes and lesions all over it, and he would have been scratching his skin so badly that he almost made himself unrecognizable. His body seemed to like target his own internal organs like his liver and lungs and kidneys, and they were damaged as well. His eyes were mostly gone because he seemed to have ripped them out, as if his immune system had literally been attacking him and burning him from the inside to the outside. The only problem is, he was in level 1.3 to get help, and this level was supposed to heal and fix problems, right? So how did Mr. Stevens end up like that while still in this level? Now it gets even worse with the next case, case 715 from Mrs. Richards. She had no outward injuries, but she unalived inside of level 1.3. When she was evaluated and examined, a horrifying COD was found. Inside of Mrs. Richards, it was discovered that she was full of softball-sized tumors from head to toe. Her blood was the consistency of jello, and she was effectively like a doll that got stuffed with cotton, except the cotton was tumors. So again, what caused this and how did she develop this inside of level 1.3? What is the decay doing to these people? Lastly is case 716, and this is the strangest of them all. The person in this case was a male, and his body was bursting at the seams from internal pressure buildup. Small cuts were opening, and a liquid from inside was leaking out of them. Upon investigation, his organs were liquefied into an entire gross goop, and all of his veins and blood vessels were the same. He was so full of this body liquid that his eyes and nose were leaking as well. So what is the overall cause of this? How is the decay making these people suffer so intently and so badly? Where does the decay come from? What is it doing to these people? All of these victims are suffering so much simply because they came into contact with the decay inside this level. 
After all these discoveries were made, and after noticing that the decay was spreading, level 1.3 was shut down by Meg, and it literally cannot be entered anymore. On the level page, there is a document titled Document 3, where a doctor that used to work in level 1.3 ended up going back to the level after it was abandoned, and he found a bunch more decay, and he lost a few limbs, and it's just a whole nasty sort of thing. It's a really long read, so I can't get into it here, but I will link it below. As you can see, this decay is like the embodiment of death, and it's slowly reaching its tentacles across the different levels of the back rooms. Where it comes from, what it's doing, we don't know anything about it, but it's obvious that it's very powerful and very ethereal and malevolent. It has the power to take over a very safe level that used to heal everybody and anything, and now it itself is being taken over and it cannot be healed. It really just gives existential dread, because if you get in contact with this decay, you heard what happened to those people that I read the autopsies for, you won't make it out. The decay caused one of the most helpful and legendary levels in the back rooms to start disappearing. And if it's able to do that to a really popular level, what could it do next? Anyways, that's it for the video. Level 1.3 was amazing. I think it's a perfect backrooms level. It's got the horror. It's got the story. It's got the imagery. It's got everything. If you want me to go over other levels, also leave a like and tell me in the comments which ones you want. Check out below for all the links to my merch, to Spoogly, and to all that jazz. And comment how you're doing today, because I'm interested to see. With all that said, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.